Hey guys, Will with LV Performance. Uh, today I have a little on-the-job video for you. Um, I guess every video is an on-the-job video for me. But anyways, um, today what we're going to be doing is showing you, uh, basically walking you through some of the stuff if you're going to be installing a RPM activated window switch. Uh, this one is actually one from Summit Racing. There's quite a few different options out there when you go to buy them. This one is one of the more uh, inexpensive ones, I would say. Uh, one of the original ones starting this off was actually uh, MSD creating their window switch which is uh, adjustable with the little chip modules that go in to change RPM limits and everything like that. The new ones, this one does not take any type of chip or anything. It's all push button. You can change whatever RPM limit you want right there to touch. Um, this setup is right around I think $62 so pretty inexpensive and uh, pretty straightforward to install. When you get the instructions for it, uh, some of it is a little bit uh, odd, I would say. They give you a lot of information that just is a little bit overwhelming when you read through it and it makes it a little more difficult looking than it really is. Um, so I'll just give you a walk through on a couple little things. This thing couldn't get any easier. So we'll show you what we went through with ours to get it going. All right, so this is our uh, Summit Racing RPM activated window switch. Um, it's not fully installed yet. I just have it sitting here until we have everything uh, totally finished on it, but it is all wired in. Um, so there's only four wires that go to this setup. Really straightforward. Um, you have your red wire, which you have wired to uh, an ignition source power. On this one, we have an add a circuit going into the fuse box, so it only gets powered once the ignition is in the uh, on and run position. Uh, you have your black ground wire. You have your gray wire that will go to your signal. Um, this setup can be used on many different vehicles and many different applications. Um, usually it'll end up going to the uh, ground side of your ignition coil. Um, they give you a lot of options in the uh, instruction manual for different ways to attach it. This one um, is on a uh, 05 Honda actually, and we're running it off a uh, RPM signal wire that comes from the ECU. Um, so it makes it really straightforward on that one. We don't have to worry about that. And then you have your blue wire That is the one that goes out to give signal to whatever it is you're trying to uh, Activate at your desired RPM setup um, These ones it's really uh, there's only two buttons on it um, Right now it is off. We'll show you uh, with the key on uh, when it has just the ignition power to it um, you can go through and that's when you're able to change all the settings also while it's sitting there and just key on it will flash through um, all the settings that it's set at so it'll show you uh, what limit you have it as um, there's three different setups there's a 1L 2L and 2LB um, I'll go through those a little bit later here for you um, but it'll show you that it'll show you what state you have it in as in normally closed or normally open uh, normally closed will have it putting signal to whatever you have it actuating until you have the desired RPM limit and it would effectively shut off whatever it is you're trying to turn off. So if you have something that you want turned off at a certain RPM, that's what that'll do. Um, otherwise, we have it set as normally open for what we're using, so it doesn't actually supply signal until it sees that desired RPM for us. And then you can change the number of cylinders. This one will go anywhere from one cylinder to 12 cylinder. And then you can also change the RPM limit. Um, this one is adjustable up to 9,900 RPM. I believe that is about it. Um, but anyway, so I'll show you right now. I'll turn the ignition on. It basically goes to this preview. So we have this one set at one limit. And it takes it a few seconds. This one is set at four cylinder. We have our RPM limit for engagement at 3,200 RPM. We have it set as normally open. And it goes back through the same ones. While it's in there, you can always change it. You push any of these buttons, and that'll set whatever you want. We only want the one limit. And then you can change it in here. Number of cylinders. Leave it as a four cylinder. That's our RPM limit. You can change it up or down. And that goes back to the normally open. 
Normally closed, normally open, normally closed, normally open, normally closed. <laughs> Sorry. Um, also, that blue LED in there is what will tell you when you have, when this, anytime this is uh, engaging whatever it is that you're trying to have RPM activated, it will light up that blue LED. So when we have ours, I'll show you here by starting it. Also, it comes out of that uh, that mode, and as soon as it senses RPM input, um, you can't get back to that screen until it is totally shut off, and then bring it back to just ignition power on, and then you can go through and change whatever you want again. You can see we're here idling. Uh, it is currently at 900 RPM. So when I bring up the um, RPM speed to 3200, well, 3200 and above, you will see that blue LED come on, showing that it is active. So let me get over here real quick. So that is a uh, really nice setup. Really simple, really straightforward. You can change it whenever you want. It retains its memory until you go in and change it yourself what the uh, different limits are. So you have 1L, 2L, and 2LB. 1L is for, I guess, one limit. Um, that one is what you have set, um, like is what we're using as our uh, VTEC engagement on this car for the solenoid. So I have it set with the 1L, so it only commands it to uh, give it that uh, signal source at 3200 and above. So once it sees over 3200 RPM, it will engage that signal wire and it'll keep it engaged until the RPM falls below that 3200 RPM and it'll disengage it. Um, the 2L basically sets two limits and you can set a high and a low limit. So we could have, if we did it set up like that, we could have it engage at 3200 RPM for the low limit and say have it disengage at 6500 rpm for the high limit and it'll only um it will re-engage when it falls back between that 32 and the 6500 rpm um and then the third one is the 2lb that one is similar to 2l i uh, have your low limit and high limit but with the 2lb it will not re-engage whatever it is you're trying to have on the rpm switch until it falls back below the low limit again. So say you have it at 3200 RPM and 6500 RPM. Once you hit 3200 RPM, it engages. Once you hit 6500 RPM, it will disengage. So say you're revving out to 7000. Once it starts to come back down, once it hits the 6500 RPM, it's not going to re-engage it. It will not re-engage it until it falls below the low limit again and then come back on. Um, so that could be nice if you're using this setup for something like nitrous or anything like that. So when the RPM's going back down, it doesn't try to re-energize the solenoid you're using for that. Or just whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, but for our setup, we're just using it on the 1L. Um, because it doesn't matter if it stays engaged past that or not. That's basically what it should do anyways. So it won't uh, turn back off until it falls below the 3200 RPM. But having the uh, option for dual limits is uh, pretty awesome. So if you are looking for an inexpensive RPM activated window switch, uh, I do highly recommend this one. We've only had this one in here just for a day, but uh, install portion of it is very nice, very straightforward. It's really easy to use and it has so many uses. Um, one thing we did come across though with ours is what we were trying to engage only has a one wire setup. Uh, we're using it on a uh, VTEC solenoid and it grounds through the body and has one energized wire that goes to it to activate the solenoid. This setup only puts out a ground signal. So most things you'd be trying to power up, you'll have you know power and a ground wire. This can't do that. Um, so what I ended up doing was actually using a, a, a five pin relay setup. Um, fifth pin, you won't be using on anything. Um, essentially though, so for your, uh, your main power wire, usually on a relay setup, you have your main power wire, your ground wire, your signal, and your output. 
Um, for this one, we're wiring it up a little bit differently. So the main power wire and the signal wire, we wired in together, going to the uh, constant hot. And then we have our output wire that is going to our solenoid that we're trying to energize. And then we routed our ground wire to the signal wire from the RPM activated window. Um, essentially turning the ground wire now into the relays signal wire. So now once it hits our desired RPM, it feeds a ground to our powered relay and then our relay sends the power to our solenoid. So a pretty simple way around that in case you run into that. Like I said, most things you'll be attaching to do you have a power on the ground. So whatever you have it going to would be uh, constantly powered or at least powered while the ignition is on, I should say. And then the uh, ground will be what turns it on and off. Um, so that is a definite possibility for you depending on what it is you're wiring to. So something we came across that might be helpful for you. Um, if there's anything in this video that we did not cover or any questions that you have about this, um, I'll show you on here the paperwork that we got this one. So Summit Racing RPM 3 mode window switch. Like I said, they give you all the information that I've told you is all in this paperwork here. Um, I was just looking uh, when I ordered this one just to look up some stuff on it and I really couldn't find much online. So I kind of wanted to put this out there just in case anyone had any questions on it. And just a little more of a walkthrough just showing truly how simple it is. Because when you're reading through the paperwork on it, it makes it look a little more difficult. And you're know, like trying to figure out what the three modes do and why. So sometimes uh, just talking through it a little bit will help. So um, hope this helps. And uh, thank you guys for watching.